Wednesday morning. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bites Last, which you can find at GuyMcPherson.com. And today I'm going to talk about Arctic permafrost and mines releasing carbon. Of course, more than expected. Like faster than expected. That's a key phrase when it comes to climate change. First from phys.org. Oh, and all of these papers are included at GuyMcPherson.com under the heading for the blog post released today, under the heading Arctic Permafrost, Mines Releasing Carbon. From phys.org, Arctic Permafrost releases more carbon dioxide than once believed. Gee, what a surprise. That's because people have been paying attention to modelers and people like Michael Mann who don't tell the full truth about things like methane in the atmosphere. Here's the lead. Rising global temperatures are causing frozen Arctic soil, permafrost, in the northern hemisphere to thaw and release CO2 that has been stored within it for thousands of years. Think about that. This carbon has been stored in the soil for thousands of years and it's being released over spans of weeks to months. Very measurable quantities. The amount of carbon stored by permafrost is estimated to be four times greater than the combined amount of CO2 emitted by modern humans, meaning since 1750, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So we're not talking about a small amount of carbon here. We're talking about a huge amount of carbon being released into the atmosphere and further serving as a greenhouse gas. What is new from this paper, and I include links to Nature Bass Last where I demonstrate that there's very little that's new from this paper, but as the paper at phys.org points out what is new is that the mineral iron in the soil was believed to bind carbon even as permafrost thawed. The new result from this peer-reviewed article demonstrate that's, demonstrates that bacteria incapacitate iron's carbon trapping ability, resulting in the release of vast amounts of CO2. This is an entirely new discovery. And as with most discoveries when it comes to climate change lately, it's not a good discovery in terms of retention of habitat for humans and other animals on Earth. Another paper references this, this peer-reviewed article. It's from sciencealert.com, released February 11th, 2021. And the headline is, Terrifying Study Finds Melting Permafrost Could Unleash Way More Carbon Than We Thought terrifying and way more than we thought. Those are some key phrases. From the article, a new study has shown that a melting Arctic may actually unleash far more carbon than even our worst case models have predicted. That's not good news. And here's the article itself from Nature Climate Change and there's a link to it at GuyMcPherson.com for today. And the bottom line in the abstract reads, by providing a terminal electron acceptor, this rusty carbon sink is effectively destroyed along the thaw gradient and cannot prevent carbon release with thaw. So what used to be believed to be a key component holding on to carbon so that it could not be released into the atmosphere. It turns out it doesn't work that way at all. So the carbon is being released. That's an important fact. And finally, to switch topics only slightly, this from mining.com, a source I don't believe I've ever cited in one of these videos before. Active abandoned coal mines emit more methane than previously thought. This is from February 7th, 2021. There's a link to the abstract of the paper that was presented at the December 2020 meeting of the American Geophysical Union. And that's because it's only an abstract because at annual meetings of these kinds of conferences, the abstract are all that is available somebody delivers the paper with a presentation and gives the full information there. From the paper at mining.com, 
Methane emissions from coal mines are approximately 50% higher than previously estimated according to a recent study by researchers at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Raven Ridge Resources, and Ruby Canyon Engineering. So a multitude of sources, among them very reliable sources, researchers presenting at the AGU meeting, which is a big deal. It's an annual meeting held in December, all of which points to even more methane being released. This is not slowing down. This is completely out of hand. So there you have it, two significant sources of methane going into the atmosphere and also carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, further serving to exacerbate the climate crisis that we find ourselves in. Methane and carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere from two different sources much faster than expected, which is the phrase we've heard very, very frequently over the course of the last decade or so. Thanks for tuning in. We'll produce another one of these science updates next week.